five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. So this is the podcast where my co-host and today a guest as well uh, listen to all the Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts from the previous week. We get together here at our gracious podcast host, BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, on a Tuesday and give our version of how those podcasts went, the truth of how those podcasts went. And hopefully there aren't too many consequences from the host of the other shows. Everything's good so we've, far. We've been good. pretty good for, for yeah. quite a while. Yeah, yeah. We've been, I mean, you know, yeah, been tamped, right. you know yeah, tamped it down a little Although, bit. Although, when we get to shift beers, I don't know if what I got from them today could be considered a consequence. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, we'll that's see. True. We'll see. I am Marco. I am a brewer and a bartender here locally and that voice you heard was my co-host the best co-host in podcast landia i am julia and i am a drinker of all of the fine beers here in the cincinnati area and i like to write funny parodies about beer specifically for beer vent yes and thank you to all of you who have been uh listening for quite a while truly appreciate it and welcome to all new listeners thank you for finding truth beer and consequences uh share it with your friends your family members if you don't have any friends or family members just uh tell strangers uh about the pod that truly uh, helps us that's how we grow and so yeah thank you very much and when you tell those strangers about our podcast you can direct them to at truth beer pod on all the social media platforms you can email us truth beer pod at gmail.com or if you would like to sponsor our show or even just buy us a, a beer or two because we really do like to drink while we record this you can do so at truthbeerpod.com just look for the big blue support us link Yes, and, you know, no craft beer podcast would be a good craft beer podcast without beers. Our beers today are sponsored by our guest. Our guest yes. is John Lee. John Lee was our first guest. Mm -hmm. John Lee, say hi to the people. What's going on? Yeah, good to have you back on the show. Thank yeah. you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. The first time you were on the show, we had not as fancy of a setup. You and Marco were passing a mic back and forth yeah. it was we were sharing a mic but we had our our arms sort of twisted like together. yeah yeah so it was like i would hold the mic for him and he would mm -hmm. hold the mic for me it was very sweet it was a, it was a very touching yeah. way to do the podcast but we sensitive i do like the fact that because it is like 97 degrees with 500 percent humidity right that we're a little more spread out yeah Ooh, what you got Hell so, yeah. like I said, we have to have beers, and we waited uh, till the pod to actually crack them. Yes. Uh, let's see. I am going to let Julia say what she's drinking first. All right. I am drinking, again, graciously provided by John Lee, Sonder Brewing's Extended Remix, which is a double West Coast IPA. I'm going to grab it glass so uh and then marky you had the same thing right i do all I right do. same thing but oh here we go have you had it before no oh that all was right. nice john up. knows what he's doing with those cracks so, so uh <laughs> i i have had this before actually i i've been to uh sonder recently and have had it excellent and you said that it was a damn fine beer so i am that's right i'm looking forward to john lee what you drinking this? yeah i am drinking missing link Ah. From Westside Brewing Company. Right. Excellent. It's a very good. I actually had, I think, my last can of that either over the weekend or late last week. And it's just, it's good. They do such a good job yeah. with such a weird beer, if that yeah. makes sense. Well, cheers, everyone. Let's, yeah, uh, cheers. Let's give it, cheers. We don't toast over the board, but. Well, we do this time. Okay. <laughs> Just because of the way we're sitting. It's I've so probably, expensive, I'm just it's, saying. It's, it's fine, it's fine. So Marco's taking a sip, and I'll have John Lee take a sip, and you guys let us know, Marco, if it's as good in Kansas as it was on draft. And yeah. then, yeah. Fantastic. Good. John, what do you think about, uh, yeah, you've, have you had this Missing Link before? I have not. First time? That's Excellent. Why I picked it. Nice, nice. Did you, so you didn't make it down to Missing Link Fest then? I was busy. Was that the same weekend as our festival? Yeah. Our, uh, cell, uh, yeah cellar Dweller Fest. Vineyard, cellar Valley Dweller Fest. Festival, yeah. yeah, we were busy. John was doing great work there at the festival. I was there to witness his great work. Oh, this is amazing. That's good, right? This is so good. Super yeah. good. Yeah. Sonder, great job on Extended Remix. Um, would love to hear a podcast about uh, you guys making this beer. Just 
That would be a, that a unique idea, Julia. <laughs> All right. Well, since we have our beers, um, let's talk about or let's kind of do a quick what podcast did we listen to. Uh-huh. Sure. So that we can let, uh, I don't know, everyone else follow along. I listened to the most recent episode of the Bruce Guys Happy Hour. I did. Good. Cincinnati Brewcast. Ready uh, to drink? Every, everyone drink. Everyone drink. Once again, we're cheersing over the soundboard, which is terrible to do. Delicious. Uh, let's see. Shift beers. Yeah. All right. And then the Jungle Gyms International Podcast. Yes. I, I managed to squeeze that one in there. Excellent. 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 Was there one? I know, John, you weren't aware that you were going to be here today, so you didn't have a chance to listen. Yeah, I failed that listen test. In. That's all right. Well, out of those four, is there one that you would prefer to start with? We do tend to do shift beers last just because of, of the burp count, but right, the burp it count, is, it is all up to you. It's more fun after we've had a couple beers. <laughs> True that. Let's do um, Brewcast. All right. All right. Brewcast. Cincy Brewcast. Let me flip my notes. This episode of Cincy Brewcast, uh, the gnome was at a place that Marco, you and I are very familiar with. Yeah. Higher Gravity Blue Ash. You yeah. more so than me. Mm -hmm. You are intimately familiar with that place. Yes. I mop every inch of that place. <laughs> and you do a wonderful job. But thank you. You know, let me just say, it smells fresher in there once you're done than BC's does after the Cintas guy shows up. Wow. Which we have not seen. He was here. In a very long time. I haven't seen him. He was yeah, here? You okay. It. Oh, because I was up at yeah. a place that other people don't work at? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was here. My bad. Are Actually, you it was the a, Cintas guy? It was a duo. <gasps> is Marco is the, Marco Cintas, the guy? Cintas guy? No. We've seen the Cintas guy. That would be four but jobs. I, haven't, I don't think I have But you've never seen Marco and, and the, the Cintas, Cintas guy. guy. Oh, you mm. haven't. You no. <laughs> <laughs> haven't. All right. So uh, Jason was the guest on this episode of Cincy Brewcast. Yes. He is one of the co-founders, co-owners, along with Nick. Right. Don't know where Nick was. Probably down at Northside doing, doing higher gravity Northside things. Yeah, could be. Uh, let's see. There was a lot of of noise going on in the background of the episode. So mm -hmm. if you haven't listened yet, just a little warning. You could still hear hear Gnome and Jason perfectly fine. Yep. But there was a little bit of construction stuff happening. So if you turn it on, you hear some hammering and all that. Don't keep listening. It doesn't yeah. impact the the quality just of the show at it. all. Yeah, absolutely. This was this year is their five year HG anniversary, yeah, which is pretty exciting. Um, I didn't realize it had been five years already. Have you been a Stein Club member all five years? They just started doing that last year before. Oh, okay. Before um, were Summit you an Park HG opened. Club member then? Not for the full five years. Okay. Um, I was in. I was a six pack member or HG Club member for maybe close to two years what were you doing for the three years before that just just sitting there drinking being a complete buffoon about the monthly offerings that they had i just oh, okay. i just i just gave them money but you have been going but i have been going there for yeah i believe they were open for it wasn't even a full year when josh and i started going there and the way that we found out about it was first my sister said, hey, there's this bottle shop down in Northside. I think it's the kind of place you and Josh would like to go. And we're like, okay, cool. We'll check it out at some point. But then one of Josh's, not co-workers, but like they worked on, on teams that worked really closely together. So uh, she said, oh, hey, my, my husband is one of the owners of it. And so we're like, well, now we have to go down there to, to check it out. So went down there and fell in love with uh, the Northside location and with what they're doing and... It's been downhill ever since. All right. Pretty much. Awesome. And yeah. I have been going to the Blue Ash location ever since uh, before open because <laughs> I got I was there when uh, the you know the first team meeting for the people that were hired there. Hey, one of these days I will get you down to Northside just so you can see the Northside space. Oh, I, yes, that would be fun. Yeah, I mean Adam even submitted a well, you know, quote unquote complaint saying that he needed you to cover one of his shifts. So Somebody asked me to cover shift today actually, and oh, yeah? I just I couldn't because yeah. I have to be here and do this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that would have been awkward like, hey, Although I probably would have brought the equipment down to like to wherever and be yeah. like, hey, you need to take like an hour long break. Right. And we're going to make this happen. Yeah. Let's see. Back to Cincy Brewcast. So higher gravity as, as a physical space is constantly changing because mostly more so Jason than Nick, it sounded like, just cannot sit still for more than five minutes. Nick, so, I have only interacted with him a handful, know, of times. handful of times, but he seems like a guy who's perfectly happy to just sit there. 
Not yeah. saying I have no, any no, no, evidence no, no, no. Of, to the to the case, but well, but but as when you compare the two, the two owners, Jason is more of the. He's always seeing something that can be imp- improved upon, or something yeah. that. Well, I know that, you know, oh, maybe we can move these tables or this display well, over here, over there, where I feel like Nick tends to be more of a, you know what, everything's working, the flow is good, no no need to change anything. Well, they're both Just, active in different ways, right? True, like, So true, Nick 100%. will walk his dog around the neighborhood, and Jason will, I don't know, mountain climb or something. So, Joe, have you been to either of the higher gravity locations? I have not. Okay, that's okay. fine. I'm slacking that's, over here, sorry. That's fine. Well, you're you're not really... It's, it's not local. It's to a him. local to you, right? So I mean, it's it's not. I don't judge, but I mean, I, I went to will just say my opinion of you has dropped slightly, knowing that. No, I'm kidding. The I'm only kidding. thing I know about higher grab they do the Christmas calendar. That's the beer like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the only thing I really know. Well, that's what the episode was about. So oh. good job. Most, yes, yes. So <laughs> see, job, so see, John. you like, are. It's it's like you knew. It's like you knew you were meant to be here today for that. Uh, I didn't realize how long they had the lease signed for the Blue Ash location. Right. That they had had it signed for over three years. I mean, I know that they really can't talk about stuff too soon just in case, you know, weird things fall through, COVID hitting, all that kind of stuff. But it's really cool to know that only roughly two years into their existence as a company, they were already planning on expanding, even though it sounded like from Jason... They didn't plan to expand, but when the opportunity was presented to them, they both knew we can't pass this up. If we can be out in Summit Park, that's going to be phenomenal. And I think it has been. I think it's been great for them. It's been great for me. Yeah, hell yeah, it has been. I'm (laughs) very happy for you. They were also surprised about how quickly they got regular customers at the Summit Park location. Yeah, you're welcome. Which, uh, I, yes, I, I think that Marco plays a huge part in that. When you walk in and Marco is the one pouring your beers or your tequila shots or making your mixed drinks for you, you want to come back time and time again. So that full credit goes to you for that. Yeah. Also having, you know, an apartment complex above the facility probably helped. If you can just it go helps. down a couple flights of stairs and Get a beer. It does help. Every night. It helps. Yeah. And having, you know, guests come to the park, it helps. Being, yes, Dora. Yeah, being the, the, the closest place to buy a six-pack of beer uh, mm-hmm. to go. A cold six-pack for A cold six-pack from, you know, the, they, they'd have to go down uh, a stoplight or two mm-hmm. to get to another place to, to buy a beer. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, 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 shell look, the shell, like, that's kind of catty corner from the park does an okay job yeah, of okay. craft stuff. But, you know. Do they have, like, yogurt, too, or something, or I ice be- cream? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Higher I gravity needs ice it. cream. Although, well, no, you can't. We have some. They're going to be, there's an ice cream place going in right next door, right? Well, there's an ice cream, uh, yes, an ice okay. cream place going in next door, which mm. I think was probably part of the reason why you heard a bunch of noise in there. Because Probably. Man, they were, do, they were like hanging drywall a couple <laughs> of weeks ago, and it was, whew, it Hey, was as rough. long as the AC stays on, they can do whatever they want to do. Yeah. But yes, you can't have the ice cream. No. But no. everyone else can have ice cream. You know, it almost sounded like Jason said self-pour taps might be coming to HG soon. Oh, my God. I know that he's a huge fan. What am fan. I going to do? Stand there and watch well, no, not, him? Not all of them. I mean, they're just going to have like two or three taps, like on the sidewalk, kind of by where the water Actually, dispenser is. Actually, I would watch is. you. I you just would. stand there and watch. I judge. Right. You would I judge. judge pour. Because, right. Because you see, you would pay by the ounce, just like all these other places where you get to pour your own beer. And the absolute mess that I would make, my pints would probably cost me like 15, 20 bucks because of the terribleness of, of my pours. <laughs> Watching somebody so. pour, pour like a. <laughs> Like like six ounces of beer and I'm like hey what what we going to bed early tonight or yeah what's I'm, happening I'm a slow drinker it'll take me three hours to finish the six ounces sorry right. I up feel until 10. I feel triggered I feel called out treat yourself <laughs> Jason did say once this is a while ago that I could be a guest bartender at some point and I said I don't know if you want to lose that much product because. That might be a bad idea. And oh. he went, and he went. If I can pour a beer, you can pour a beer. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. You I don't can, know. It still sounds it. risky. You All can right. do it. All right. John, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. All right. One for you. Right. One for me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, so John, are you a better brewer or a better beer pourer? I'm a better beer drinker. Hell yes. So option C. <laughs> option C. I am with you 100 percent on that one. 
Uh, after that, they got into Beer Vent. Yeah. They got into Beer Vent, which is just absolutely so amazing. They had no idea what they were getting into. They still have no idea what they're doing. I but my God, they, they pull it off. have a idea now, yes. for sure. But, but I feel like every year they're going, oh God, here it comes again. Well, this is what we... But I think it's it's one of those excited, excited, nervous anticipations. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, this is going to be their uh, their fourth year of beer vent. Uh, I only participated in the last three years because the first year I just I didn't realize that it existed. And poor marketing job then. Poor marketing job. If Absolutely. You didn't know, if I didn't know, if you didn't know. There's a problem. Then who else knew? <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> now they did do two years ago two different beer vent calendars, right. which one standard, one premium. Right. And I, I really liked the idea. Did you get both boxes? I did. I got both boxes. And because I was, and that was, I believe, the first year that they had specialty beers made from some of the breweries. Okay. Like Westside Brewings. I think it was a Blackberry Farmhouse. They had a couple that were being brewed specifically for the beer vent boxes, and they were only going to be in the premium boxes. So I ordered one of each because I'm like, if I'm going to be writing these parodies every day about what's going on, I need to be able to compare the two to have, a, have some fun with that. But then I started to get FOMO closer to beer vent happening. Marco is rocking out to the music here. And so, I, and so I was like, well, what if I really, really like these special beers that I can only get in this box? So I bought a second premium box. Which actually worked out because Gnome said that he didn't get a chance that year to buy one before they sold out. And I went, kismet, as, yeah. as Sonder Stories would say. I miss Sonder Stories. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I miss the people. Uh, I, I miss do. People. Absolutely. Absolutely. I miss hearing the people. Yes. Yes. You know, felt like hearing they were the friends. Fun. Absolutely. Well, I mean, certainly. They are. Yeah. They are. Yeah, yeah. They are. Uh, but it ended up working out because I told him, I sent him a message just saying, hey, I ordered two of these. Because of everything you do for craft beer, one of them is yours. Either I can pick it up and find a way to get it to you, or if you think you can get down to Northside. And uh, that's when he forced his poor pregnant wife that's to walk That's a great story walk about down. how he forced his pregnant wife yes. to, to, to walk four blocks from the higher gravity location. Well, first she had to park four blocks away. She parked it where? Urban? Mm -hmm. Well, that's only three blocks away. She okay. would have done better if she did that. Four blocks away in the parking lot. Walked her her poor pregnant ass all the way up to higher gravity, got the box, and then walked it all the way back to the car, not right. realizing it was like a 35, 40 pound box. <sighs> yeah. When he when he said I think it might have been a weekly pine or something where he where he told that and I'm yeah. like, oh my god. And then she got no, home. They, she got home with the box. He's like, what did you make me do? And he was, he was there with a beer. He had a beer and a sniffer beer and, a, and sniffer. a cigar. He cigar was sitting outside with his, his feet, feet up. Propped up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what's the matter? Oh, you my pick God. Up the beer? Mrs. Gnome, I know you're a huge fan of the show. I know you listen all the time. I am sorry. I apologize to you for for that. Um, well, it's what he it's said ever... when she said, what did you make me do? And he just went, sometimes it bees like that. <laughs> Oh my God! It, I shouldn't laugh, but damn. I mean, after the fact, it's well, funny. right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I humor mean, is what tragedy in time, pretty much. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, do it. Yeah, I'm gonna write that down. All right, let's Who see said what that? So, uh, Socrates. Uh, Confucius. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he was having a conversation with Plato, and they were like, you know what? This is this shit's funny, and it's like, well, no, it's still kind of tragic that it happened. That's and good. Con they were like, Confucius two, say two philosophers, would... and they just went, that shit's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see a couple other notes on beer fest. I will be incredibly upset if there's ever a beer vent box where we do not get pranked one day. With a terrible beer. With like, or seltzer. or With like Brewdog socks or something. Oh, my God. Or a bandana. Dude, if there is anything Brewdog in that box, I'm throwing it at Jason's head. Yeah. I'm just going to say That's probably Brewdog is a shit company, and I do not support them. So that will be an immediate drain pour. That will result in not a single post that day for a beer vent. So please avoid Brewdog at all costs. Yeah. My own personal opinion, they just are not uh, the best company see what else they they did a, a really cool discussion about 
beer styles, which is something that we've talked about before. Right. If you have something listed as an English mild, it doesn't really sell that well because people don't understand what it is. But if it's listed as an amber, it it sells, I, I don't want to say exponentially better, but it, it will sell versus right. something called an English mild, which I don't really understand. And John, well, your, your face is... is Twisting up, you you have thoughts. So, what are your thoughts yeah. on on styles? John looked like he he, he <laughs> stepped yeah. on a thumbtack. <laughs> it was a painful thing to listen to. Yeah, yeah. English mild. There's multiple recipes that you can brew for it. English mild, mm -hmm. amber, dark mild, mm -hmm. a session. So there's it's more than just one beer. I, I feel like it's like a big category. Sure. Of like a even an ESB or ESB. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a and lot. Be and by the way, John, drop, go ahead and drop your uh, bona fides. Uh, yes. Th tell them yes. Uh, that you are educated. So, so yes, John, drop where, where you get to brew at. They're, they're called, well, first of well, all, education. Okay. Yes. And then where you're at. Uh, uh, yes. And even though is, we're in uh, Cincinnati, I don't care where you went to high school. Let's just, you know, yeah, higher education. A, yeah, and whatever. Beer. Bona fides. <laughs> I went to Cincinnati State, so if you're looking for a craft beer education, they have it there. Awesome. I literally Googled beer school, and that's the first one that popped up. Cool. That's how I have my career. Excellent. And where has that taken you as far as places that you've been able to work at? So I've worked at Cellar Dweller mm -hmm. Brewing Company up over in Morrow, and now I'm over at uh, Wiedemann. Excellent. Ah, brewing some lagers. We even make some really good stuff. Like they're they're very underrated for what they're doing because I think a lot of people are still stuck on the Are they? 40 year ago Wiedemann. I I hope not. Like I hope that's not the case. I think it's getting better. I think just the marketing and all that's getting better with it. But I I don't know. I think the marketing is 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 a a throwback a throwback a retro um to try and get a legacy customer to understand that beer can taste better than what the what I had heard. That's true. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not native to Cincinnati. But what I had heard uh, Wiedemann product was back then uh, to what it is now, I mean, is, of course, different, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, it's, it's quality ingredients, uh, you know, super smart people executing uh, craft beer mm -hmm. at its, at, you know, to its truest form. So, yeah. So kind of going back to, yeah, yeah. John? Any any thoughts there? Good loggers. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> what we're famous for. Well, I haven't had any of the older products, well, because mm -hmm. I wasn't alive, so I don't know. Wow. All right. I mean, yeah. he could he could have just said that you and I are old. He's as, but, you he's, know, he's as he, old he as he tiptoed around. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know what the product was when they were in Newport or Covington. I can't yeah. remember which mm -hmm. one yeah, it was. Sure. I can't remember. Yeah. But I didn't have their product, so I don't. I really don't have anything to compare okay. it to. When people say, "Oh, I had Wiedemann when Way my grandpa when. was gotcha, a, gotcha," okay. when I was young, so I don't know what they're talking about. But I know it's good lager now. So mm -hmm. Yeah, everything I've had from them, I've, I've enjoyed. Absolutely. Kind of going back to the the styles, they also talk. So English milds and IPLs, India Pale Lagers, are were the two things that they that they touched on, which. If you call it an IPL, it does not, just like saying it's an English mild, it doesn't really sell because people don't really know what you're talking about. But you call it an amber for the English mild or a cold IPA, it's people cold go, IPA. oh, I know what that is. And and they buy it. And a lot of it is, is marketing, is what Jason was touching sure. on. And to tie that back into the kind of beer vent discussion, the high grain beer from last year's beer vent calendar the fucking christmas sale yeah it was on tap uh in a uh, north side for a while but after christmas they just said it was a spiced ale and not a christmas ale and it kept selling so i feel like like tap rooms should almost take liberties if they understand the style a, yeah if they it, understand the style i feel like it's perfectly acceptable to say the brewery gives you something that they call an English mild. I feel like if the tap room knows its audience, knows its regular customers, calling it an amber and trying to educate people when they order it, hopefully, if that fits into it, I think that that's 
acceptable. I loved you know? uh, and and do love because it's it's something that's going to come back. I think fucking Christmas ale. Uh, it that, was that really was good. Genius, and it was delicious. So, mm-hmm. uh, for anybody listening, the it's two words. P H O is the way it's spelled, mm-hmm. and then King K I N G, and then Christmas ale. Right. Because uh, it was but, pho spices. Right, and so the but yes, it's pho is how it, P-H-O is actually pronounced. So it's fucking Christmas Ale. It was awesome. It was so much fun. It, I loved it. it. It is awesome. It was great pulling it out of the beer event box and going, oh my God, they gave us a fucking Christmas Ale. <laughs> like just the just the amount of fun you could have with that name. Well, and they talked a little bit about the interaction between yeah. the brewery and, and Higher Gravity and, naming and Jason it and, and all that. So yeah. that was cool. So go listen to that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, we're just scratching the surface of this episode because, again, we don't want to give you the entire episode. We want you to listen. No, we want to you the to listen. Uh, so but you- the the so the beer bent box is uh, on sale. Yeah. I don't want to call it pre-sale because this is the, the sale. sale. True, it yes. is on yes. sale, and they're going to sell it till they sell out. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking for it, and you're going to wait till November, good luck. You're right. going to have to buy right. it from somebody secondhand or something because uh, it's going to sell out. Right. So definitely get your orders in. If you if you order your box before the end of July, so you still have a week and a half, two weeks left from when this episode comes out, uh, you'll also get an exclusive pint class that's designed by Scott Hand, who does all of Urban Artifacts can art. So if you like those designs, you're going to absolutely love this glass. Sure. The glass looks awesome. It looks fantastic. So, yes, definitely order your beer vent box. Don't wait until the last minute because you will not get one. Yeah. and It's just a hell of a lot of fun. And Jason does talk about uh, the beer vent box is for beer drinkers who are willing to, to span the spectrum mm-hmm. of, of mm-hmm. what you want to drink. Right. Because you don't know what you're going to get. Right. You could it's get, not... You could get a prank, but it's, it's uh, all the way from... A crispy lager all the way to, you know, an adjuncted stout and everything in between. Mm-hmm. So if if you like sours and you like milkshake IPAs and you like West Coast IPAs and you like all uh, English malts, uh, everything. It, mm-hmm. it could be anything in the box. It, it is multiple styles. It's not an IPA box. It's not a stout box. It's not a Christmas beer box. Right. That's the, that's the other thing is that it's very important to understand. It's not a box full of nothing but Christmas beer. Correct. See, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was no, nothing but Christmas beers. It no. is and holiday all spices. kinds of styles, all kinds of adjuncted, non-adjuncted. It's going to be some beers from local breweries that brew a beer specifically for the beer Just vent calendar. That. You can only get in the beer vent calendar. It's also some beers that aren't currently really distributed in Cincinnati right. that Jason's able to work with. Jason and Nick are able to work with the distributors right. to get like kind of one-time shipments. So, I mean, there might be 450 North in the box. You never know. Possibly. 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 Very so, possibly. And only briefly uh, towards the end did they touch on uh, the actual space like a, whatever anybody else wants to know. Look, higher gravity uh, Summit Park. It is uh, your to-go shop. You can go in, get mm-hmm. to-go beer, you can get to-go wine. Uh, there's uh, 30 taps. Um, you've got wine on tap, uh, kombucha, soft root beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a full cold bar. Cold brew. Cold brew coffee. Cold brew coffee. Uh, full bar. So go in and get your margaritas or just get a highball, you know. Um, if Annie's working, have her make you a spicy margarita. Grills. It is the Best. Yeah, for reals. The and, best. Uh, it's a Dora area, so you can get uh, everything you want in a Dora cup, and you can go walk around Summit Park. It's a, yeah. an amazing park, and uh, so it's just it, it's been really great to 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 work there and to you know get to uh, know all the people that come in. Also, fantastic to work with uh, the ownership. They are fantastic, and uh, our post uh, production producer Jason uh, is. You know, really fantastic to see uh, almost on a daily basis when I'm there. So really fun episode. Yeah. John, did you have any other kind of comments or questions that that you I know you weren't able to listen to this episode yet, but anything that you wanted to ask or touch on or comment on based on on our recap? I think we got everything. All I think right. that's what this show's for. So, it's Julia, true. I think I've listened I just, I to just... it <laughs> s- listening to you guys. So, the I know that the gnome was going to put a link in the show notes uh, to get to be able to buy the box. Yes. Uh, and Or you could just go to hiregravitycrafthouse.com. And that's house, H-A-U-S, 
Yeah. You just click. I think it's it's I think it's a store link. I don't think it's shop. Either way, when you go to HigherGravityCraftHouse.com, you know to look for the word store or shop, and right. that's where you can find the box to order, and you can pick it up at either their north side or their blue ash location. Uh, they're going to try to have it ready the week before Thanksgiving, I believe yeah, they said. And that's the other thing is that uh, when you check out, it'll say that your you know your box is ready. It's not ready. It's going to be ready uh, later, uh, but you bought it. So just go ahead and check out and, and don't think it's it, it's ready. It's not. It'll, so it's a, <laughs> just one of those things. Can you go in person and buy the box? Uh, I, I, no. Well, yes and no. So when I say yes and no, don't come up to me and ask to buy the box. Uh, I'm going to direct you if you're in the bar to go to the website. And there's a reason for that. I don't think it's in your point of sale system. Well, it, it's it's that in there's a lot of communication that goes out surrounding or with the box. And True. that communication is via email. So buying it through the website is the preferred way to buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you buy it at the store, there's like more hoops that need to, to go through in mm-hmm. order to make sure that you're on the email list for the people that buy the box only. To know exactly when it's going to be ready for right. pickup, that kind so of thing. If yeah, you're so sitting, if you're sitting at Higher Gravity and, and you decide you want to buy a box. Yeah, if you're listening to this while you're having a drink at Higher Gravity and you decide yeah. time to buy a box, please don't. Don't bug your bartender about it. No, because we're get gonna, on your phone. We're going to direct you to the website, uh, and that's per ownership uh, and instruction. So. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Well, um, looks like John, your glass is starting to get a little empty. Marco, so is yours. I'm the slowest drinker in the world, so I'm still good. Do want to take a real quick break, and then John, you can pick the next podcast that uh, that we get to. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. We'll be right back, guys. We made it back. We did. We did. It was a bit longer of a break than than we anticipated, but it's because you got another beer. Uh, John's not doing another beer because he has to head out, which I'm right. sad about. But we also did cover a few things. Talk about we some did. things for we did. The, we did some the upcoming live show, live yes. Trooper Pod next Tuesday, July 26th, 6 p.m. Be here. Or, or don't. I mean, we'd love for you to be here, but yeah, if you can't make it for whatever here, reason, but... like you're going to a state that we shall not mention. Right. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, thank you so much for being here. I know you can't stick around for the full episode, but we always love having you here. You are our yeah. very first guest, and any time that you are in the area on a Tuesday, but yeah, we well, love having yeah. you here. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And happy one year anniversary. I'm so happy thank for you. you guys for making thank it. Yeah. Thank one you. One year. Uh, no plans on hitting the brakes anytime soon. No, definitely not. I'm having too much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, was there anything that you wanted to to plug or talk about or or anything at all before uh, before you have to head out? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let I us know. Talk about something real Hell quick. yeah, let's do it. Let's do talk it. about the next episode. Oh, what okay. Are we, what are we going to talk about? What that week's pick? episode yeah, of gonna... a podcast. <laughs> 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 what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about Jungle Gyms. Oh, okay. next, next. Yes, next, yes, next. Next, yeah. next, next on this episode. Yeah, on we're going to talk episode. about, yes, we're going to talk about the Jungle Gyms International podcast where they talked about the beer fest that Jungle Gyms just had their first time back in two years because of right. COVID. Yeah, I wish you could stick around John, for that one. John, uh, when's the last time you were at Jungle Gyms? Either location. Three, four months ago. Okay. What's yeah, the better been, location, a... Eastgate or Fairfield? I only I only go to Fairfield. Correct so answer. I, I, I haven't been there's to nothing, the There's nothing wrong Eastgate. with Eastgate, but Fairfield is definitely the location. Well, the gift I got you came from Eastgate. Just telling you. Oh, well, so this is a throw. This in. is this is a shout out kind of to the Newbert report. So, Newbert, I know that you guys said that we needed to find a a common beer to drink together virtually. Marco found a collective arts IPA. I did. Um, I don't remember the name of it offhand. I know you uh, sent me a picture I of will, it. Yeah. Uh, so while you're looking up the picture, um, to the Nuba report, we're definitely going to be letting you know the beer that Marco found. It was older, you said. Like they didn't have anything super fresh from Collective Arts. Yeah, it was like Arts. 55 years old. Oh, geez. Ransack the Universe. IPA. All right, so Nuba Report, if you can find Ransack the Universe from Collective Arts, we will figure out a time that we can either be on the phone together and drink together, or I know that um, that 
that Newbert does a Twitch stream. Maybe while he's streaming, he can drink one, we can drink one, so that we're virtually drinking the same beer together. Marco found one, so Collective Arts is happening. Yeah. It is happening, and I am excited. And that came from Eastgate. Okay, so we completely took all of this away from John Lee and Jungle Gyms. I apologize. No, you're fine. It's a, it's a thing that we do. We tangent. But no, thank you so incredibly much. Is there anything else that you wanted to shout out for either Cellar Dweller or Wiedemann or you personally? Anything at all that, no, that thank you want you. to tell the people? Thank you for one year of craft beer podcasts about podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I think the community needed that. Thank you Hopefully. for having Hopefully. me for the first guest. Yes. Even though I, I invited myself. Hey, always like welcome. Tonight, even always though I welcome. Can't read a text. That's Thank okay. you guys hey, so every, much. Every every episode we say what day we're here, where we are. It is always an open invitation. If you want to stop by and you want to be on the podcast, we'll set up a mic for you. Right. So, always happy to have you here. You're awesome. Absolutely. You're Thank awesome. you so much, guys. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. We will miss you next week, but hey, we will definitely shout you out, and we will see you back here soon. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Hopefully I bring some crazy beers next time. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. I'll look forward to it. All right. All right. right, We're going to take another super fast break so that we can say bye to John Lee properly, and then we'll be right back to talk about uh, the Jungle Gyms International Podcast. Yeah. Something. I'll I'll cut out, like. Cut off the arms? Bisexual, by, by, <laughs> I love it. We are bisexual. Oh, right. uh, hell yeah. That's right. Flexing. Flexing on you. Getting all bisexual up in here. <laughs> That's it. We ripped, I, the, ripped, <laughs> the, ripped, ripped the sleeves uh, off our shirts and we get bisexual. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, shit. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's like a pickup line. Like somebody walks around in front of a lady. Like, like, hey, hey you you, bis- are you bisexual? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Are we oh, going to get to the end, Julia? Never. I mean, it's I already know. quarter after seven. I mean, we have we three gonna- podcasts to go. So if we're gonna if we're gonna make it, you're crying. I love it. Oh, oh shit. shit! I am crying. That was hilarious. <laughs> hey everyone. Ooh. We Boy, said we said goodbye to John, and that was a hoot. And depending on what I cut and leave in and all that, you may have heard an absolutely amazing conversation with us and producer Brian, who yeah. has never been on the show officially until now. Right. And it was only, hey, let me see what this sounds like. Okay, it sounds like I'm on a podcast. Which, right. Yeah. Uh, and maybe he's we been get in a, the background. Maybe like he's. We might get a treat next week. We'll see. I hope so. I we'll really see. hope so because I appreciate everything that that Brian and and Ben and and Caleb and just just Kenny and you know formerly from one of our producers. I appreciate everything that BCs and everyone here at BCs has done for us. Love it over if the Kenny last could show year. Up next week, that'd be yeah, awesome. that'd be super cool. So Kenny, I know you're a huge fan. Please come to our show. Yeah, please. Please, please, please. All right. So before John Lee uh, scooted out, he said he wanted us to cover the Jungle Gyms International podcast next. Sure. So that's what we're gonna do. This was this is gonna be a quick recap. I feel like um, this is their Beer Fest is back show. They do a beer fest every year, but it has been on hold since 2019 because of the COVIDs, in case you weren't aware of things like that. Right. So I will say the first part of their show, so the first like 10 to 15 or 10 to 11-ish minutes, um, was all about their upcoming Fizz Fest, which is a non-alcoholic drink festival, which is happening on August the 6th. It's going to be where they you can sample teas and waters and energy drinks and colas and anything that doesn't have alcohol in it, basically, to see the wide range of non-alcoholic beverages. <laughs> Marco doesn't understand non-alcoholic but what just, if you but bring just your so own Campari and, and spaghetti? And spaghetti everything. We should do that. We should show up. <laughs> they would and kick then us out. Give, give, us, give us a sample of like tea, and then we like pull out a flask and put a little thing yeah, in it. They'll be like, what are, like what, are doing? "What are you doing?" And we're like, "Hey, spaghetti." We're spaghetti. The non-alcoholic. Anyways, stuff. we're getting ahead of ourselves as well. <laughs> we really are. Uh, stick to the end of the episode when we cover one of our favorite podcasts to 
hear more about the spaghetti spaghetti beverages. Yeah. My God. So Jungle Gyms International Podcast, Beer Fest is back. Uh, again, the first, I believe it was 11 minutes are about their Fizz Fest with one of their um, their sales directors of non-alcoholic beverages, teas, waters, energy drinks, soft drinks, all that good stuff. If you want to jump. just stuff. Just stuff. If you want to jump directly into the alcoholic portion of the podcast, uh, just jump to the 11th minute. I didn't write down the seconds, but uh, from 11 minutes to about 36 minutes is about the Jungle Gyms Beer Fest. It was back in June, June 17th and 18th. And really this part of the of the show, I almost feel like could have been a mini episode because it was, it was really... Uh, like Mark walking around to some of the different vendors that were there saying, hey, what do you have? Let me try this. Maybe doing a little reminiscing of times that he's had that beer before or just some little factoids about that beer. So the very first thing that he tried was birch beer from Astra, which is a seltzer, yeah. not a beer. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he basically just just got samples of stuff and tried it and talked about how either good it was or I remember having this back back when or I never had this before and this is really good. He did, however, one of the key points of the Beer Fest sampling that he did, he got his hand slapped by Urban Artifact by calling their beer a sour because Urban Artifact does not make sour beers. They make fruit tarts. And so he was chastised heavily in that portion of the podcast. So if you want to hear that, definitely check it out. One of the fun parts about the Beer Fest recap, I thought, was the little mini interviews he did with some of right. the festival yep. uh, festival goers, the people that were showing up to the festival. It was absolutely amazing, incredibly in-depth and thought-provoking commentary from the, the patrons of Jungle Jim's Beer Fest. Yeah. How um, how familiar with craft beer a lot of these people were. Glad that Jungle Jim's uh, Beer Fest is back, okay. uh, you know, or was back. Yeah. Um, I have not been to one. I would I like either. to go. Well, I'm sure. It seems like I mean, a seems like a good time. Um, Jungle was there. Yeah. And he was in the air conditioned section, and he didn't understand why there were people that weren't standing in the air conditioning. It's like, well. If the beer is in a non-air conditioned part of the facility, that's where people are going to be. Why you do a beer fest if you're not drinking beer, regardless of the air conditioning situation? Yeah. Jungle made all the little mini meatballs himself. Yeah. Very cool stuff that you that's, would only know great. if you listen to the podcast. Uh, but yeah, I, I will say I will be honest. the The beer fest recap. You know, Julia, we only want you to be honest. Well, and I'm going to be honest. Okay. The beer. F I don't even want to call it a. I don't even want to call it a recap because it was kind of a live recording of him of, of Mark being there. It wasn't the most exciting for me to listen to. I think that I would have enjoyed talking to maybe some of the people that coordinate the beer fest to figure out how it all came together, and then a smaller segment on the beers he tried and the people that you know just the regular festival goers like us. But it was still it was still fun for him to go around and do all that. Though at the 37 minute mark, the podcast shifted gears and Mark was talking to a couple of the guys from Country Boy Brewing. Hey now. About an event that they that they had back on uh, July 16th. So just this past weekend from when we recorded this, the Country Boy Barbecue Blowout was hosted at Jungle Jim's Fairfield. Pete and Nate from Country Boy were on the phone, and Phil from Country Boy was in studio. And that was a really cool interview. That, that was, was something that I wish almost the whole episode was, was Jungle Jim's and their relationship with Country Boy Brewing. Yeah, that that was definitely, that that conversation was fun. It was. It, it was, was fun, it was, it was engaging. It was, you can put time into ancillary silliness that was a a good conversation that was fun yeah. i i enjoyed that you part. got some of the history of country boy brewing yeah and they talked about because one of the beers that they well i think it might have been the only beer that they drank during this segment was their hazy ipa series and it was really cool to hear them talk about about that series because it is named after 
like trail and rock climbing destinations in Red River Gorge, which is a huge part of of Lexington and the Kentucky area that Country yeah. Boy is focused and based around. Mm-hmm. But Country Boy is is a, an incredibly fun brewery. I think their lager, lager con lima there is one of my probably in my top 10 if not top 5 beers. It is just incredibly good. Wow. They make super solid beer. I mean it's uh, start with uh, number six, Julie, and oh, go gee. six. Oh, you're one. doing this. You're doing this. Okay, so I think if I had to do a top six, six would probably be, and these are gonna these are gonna change as time goes by and more and more beers come out. Um, squeeze box from Urban Artifact. Okay. I've, I've got to put Very that good. in there. Very good. I think five. I'll say is. I'm, you know what? I'm going to throw it to Extended Remix from Sonder wow. as I'm drinking that now okay. because it's it's a West Coast, but I'm not a huge, like, super bitter fan, but Hell this yeah. is ridiculously approachable. It's it very is good. really, really good. It's very good. So I'll, I, I mean, again, as more and more beers come out, it may change, sure. but as it currently stands, that's going to sure. be number five. It's okay to be I'm uh, gonna say uh, uh, subject to recency bias as well because, sure. because sure. it's it's your top five. Or as of this moment. Correct. Um, oh, let's top go. six, actually. Yeah, top six. Uh, number four, I think I would give to... I'm going to say that number four for me is Fig Leaf Strawberry Basmati. Ooh, okay. Because it's, I mean, especially now, like, I'm, I'm approaching this from a summer beer sure. mindset. Like, thinking about darker heavier beers they just don't sound good to me so again give me right. six months give me to the winter and my top six will probably change all right number three i'm gonna give to i'm gonna say high grain slow pour pilsner Ooh. because right. it is well, uh, which one the um the uh, they have a czech and an italian I, right? the italian not the czech pilsner okay. it, they're both good but i i do tend to enjoy the italian pilsner's more, Hell yeah. I feel like. Hell yeah. So high grains Italian Pilsner on slow pour. Gonna make that that yeah. uh, that distinction there. Number two, I am going to give to Fibonacci for their origin of the species with caramel, almond, and black tea. Okay. It is very good. So 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 good. Hell yeah. And number one, West Side's Tippa, their triple IPA. All right. That beer kills right. it. Homer, but that's fine. That's sure. your list. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Good, good that list. Is, that is my that is my top six. But yeah, con- Country Love Boy it. absolutely makes it into my top ten. Hell yeah! But no, uh, this this episode of the the Jungle Gyms International podcast, I don't want to say there wasn't a lot of content, but a decent portion again from that eleven minute to that thirty six ish minute mark. So majority of the episode was just Mark going to, oh, hey, now we're over at Urban Artifacts Table. Hey, what do you have at Beer Fest? Oh, I I haven't had this beer in quite a while. Let me go ahead and have that. Oh, it's just as good as I remember. You did get a little information about the breweries from him talking to them, but it wasn't anything overly exciting or new, I felt like. But their conversation with Country Boy absolutely made the episode worth listening to. Yeah. Yeah. And before we kind of finish this, you had a new beer. You had a new beer in your glass that I did not ask you about. I'm still drinking Senator Remix. I'm almost done. But yeah. what did you have to drink while we recap the Jungle Gyms International podcast? Well, I wanted to go ahead and uh, represent Blocks. Hell yeah. Spiked Ice. Hell and uh, I had a uh, High Life with a Blocks what Spiked flavor? Ice. Uh, it was lime. Nice. How it was, was it? It was delicious. Good. I'll and tell I you say what. was in the past tense because of your it's glasses. Gone. Empty. Marco is now pitted, or he's getting pitted. Well, I mean, <laughs> we'll see. responsibly pitted. Responsibly, absolutely. Hashtag uh, pit responsibly. There we go. We will make that a thing. All right. So you're you crush that. I am just about finished with mine. So we are going to take yet another really quick break. We're both going to do our thing, and then we're going to come back with Bruce Guy's happy hour and shift beer. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, we are back once again. Marco, you have a new beer in your glass. I have a new beer in my glass. What are you drinking? So I have uh, Pilsner. Yeah? Uh, from Pipeworks. It is uh, premium. Uh, premium Pils. 
on. Slowpour. Hell yeah. Slowpour is the way to do those Pilsners. I love it. Delicious. I am, it, it is. It is. I would have gotten that, but I asked producer Brian to pick my beer for me, and uh, and he did. I'm trying to look up the brewery just to make sure that I get it all correct. I am drinking from Ale Smith, Ale Smith Brewing Company. A little bit tricky to say. Dark Ambrosia. It is their... Oh. You did get the dark ambrosia? Get, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, shit. I said, fuck it, let's do it. It is a strong ale. It, um, this could be a really, really, really bad idea. It It'd is right. a, it What's is for a, dinner, Taco Bell? Probably Skyline <laughs> or Taco Bell. Either way, it's not good. You Ooh. know what I mean? Like, either way, <sighs> it's... But I have Woof. limited resources on a weeknight at, like, 10 p.m. Yeah, that's the, that's the trouble is that when is, we get out of here. That is the trouble, yeah. I don't mind it. I'm not complaining. But no, yeah, so nobody, this this is a twelve point eight percent strong ale. So I did not put a blocks in this one because I do not need any more than twelve point eight percent. Sure. And uh, even though this normally goes in a tulip glass, I got my uh, my BC's Bottle Lodge Mug Club mug right filled almost to the top. So this could be this could be, be a oh, fucking Jesus. good end right. to the show. I it's apologize in advance. It's such a great mug. I am yeah. so happy with it. I love it. All right. We have an hour and 20 minutes before we shut this place down and we want to hang out for a bit before that happens. Yeah, so we do. let's go we ahead. We got some housekeeping stuff to do. True that. For next uh, week. Yes, our live show, live show. 6 p.m. BC's Bud Lodge Montgomery. Be here or We'll make fun of you for not being here. Right. And um, you'll have to live with that for the rest of your life. Forever. Pretty much. Forever. You missed our one-year live show. It only happens once. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Then you'll have to wait for the two-year live show, which, which only happens Which still won't once. be the same, right, which still won't be the same as the one-year live show right. because it, it'll be the two-year. Yeah, anyway, Bruce exactly. Guy's Happy Hour. Let's get into episode eight, North Carolina's First Craft Brewery. Yep. I love this podcast so incredibly much. I know we say it every single time they release an episode that we get to talk about. Uh, this was Uli Benowitz, who was a German immigrant who came over to the United States and whose brother convinced him to purchase a brewing system from Belgium before North Carolina even allowed beer to be made in the state. I, again, smacking <laughs> into the microphone. My God. I told hey, you, a professional next life. It's all good. It's so, all good. Uh, it's real. What I what I liked, uh, first off from the bat, is that I didn't know who Uli was. And it was many, not a name familiar to me either, yeah. Many of the names that they've had in this season were names that I was familiar with or, you know, tangentially familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and But Uli... That he he was a fun dude. Oh my I mean, god, I want to so, have a beer with that guy. Hell yeah. He was an absolute riot and it reminded me so much. So again, German immigrant, like yeah. from you know, Belgium, all that. He he, he was reminded a, me of my grandparents who came over from Yugoslavia, which kind of doesn't exist anymore, but they always just said, eh, we're technically, you know, German because it was just easier to say than Yugoslavian. So a lot of, of his accent, a lot of the way that the way that he said things just made me think of my grandparents. And it just made that made me roll like I don't even know if I want to say relate to this episode so much more. But it just it was so much more. Oh, I'm sure it made was. me so much more invested in the episode because of that. Yes. And the yeah. and the, 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 the nostalgia, you know, from the the the. Lineage, the the heritage, mm -hmm. you know, I I, I get that. I, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though that's you know not my not my uh, uh, background uh, from a geography standpoint, mm -hmm. but I I felt I got I got warm and fuzzy listening to him. Yeah. Uh, because he he's just a super easy person to to talk with and relate with, and mm -hmm. it really hit it off well. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Brett and Mike. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was really, really, a, it was a fun to hear how funny it was how he happened into a brew system. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then having a brew system saying, okay, well then I guess I'm going to 
uh, open a brewery and then I'm going to have, you know, sausages and we're like going to like a brew pub. He kept saying gonna, brew pub more gonna, than brewery because yeah, they didn't have like pub. a restaurant yeah. uh, idea on it. Yeah, but it pub. was it was hilarious because he bought this this system from Belgium. So it was shipped overseas to him. And as he was starting up the Weeping Radish, which it sounds like recently, within the last year or so, it sounds like ownership changed hands. And he I sold. And they weren't open this past summer because I was actually like looking up. The gnome was men- was asking for recommendations for places to go to drink while right. he was vacationing in the Outer Banks, and I've never been to the Outer Banks, but I'm like, oh, let me just I let me either. just Google Foo and see if I can find something that sounds cool. Stumbled upon the weep, the weeping radish. Never knew anything about it prior. So listening to this episode was freaking awesome because I'm like, this connects a lot of dots for me. They weren't open this past summer, I guess, just due to the change of ownership, figuring Probably. out stuff hopefully. and all that. Yeah, hopefully. Ho- hopefully they bought a brewery, uh, a brew pub, with mm-hmm. the intentions of reopening the brew pub. Yes. But yes. Uli goes in to talk about uh, from the very beginning because they ask him about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets the brew system. Uh, in a state, not legal. A dry state. Dry state. Yes. You know, so not legal. And then talks a little bit about the uh, the way that he had to interact with politicians. I don't... Uh, the we, alcohol beverage control portion of the government who actually ended up helping him. Like, they flat out said to him when he was like, oh, well, I'm bringing this brew system in, but I can't brew. They said... We'll just change the law. We'll help you. Right. Like, wh- who who does that? <laughs> who just changes the law? Right. It was it was a super 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 cool story of how he went from re- it sounded like not really being interested in owning running a brewery in any way shape or form to his brother saying, oh, you should totally buy this. I mean, right. the money will just be flowing in. It'll pay right. for itself in no time. To, okay, sure, I'll buy that. And then finding out this is a dry state, like I'm not legally allowed to make beer here, to a federal government entity saying, we'll just change the law so that you can, we'll help you. Right. Uh, <laughs> it then, was and ridiculous. Then, and then it throughout was awesome. the process, yeah. and then throughout the process, uh, what what agency got involved because uh, he wasn't a native citizen? It was like it, the anti terrorist agency. agency. Yeah, like they like, did inspections. So we're, we're kind of we're kind somebody. of jumping around in this episode because yeah. it was like every piece of what Uli was saying was so incredibly interesting and fun and just amazing and just what the fuck is going on here right he had regular inspections from like the anti-terrorancy anti-terrorist agency come into his brew pub where he was making beer and sausages to make sure there were no terrorists there it was the weirdest freaking thing that i have ever heard but it is but the most amazing but thing in, I've ever heard. In retrospect, uh, first of all, so of course it, he sold the brewery. Yes. So that weight has been lifted off of him. Right. He can just and the enjoy. Way, the yeah. way that he talked about it was was in in sheer joy the whole time. Oh, yeah, 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 he yeah. was very yeah. he was very forthcoming. Uh, forthcoming. He also uh, sounded uh, very happy and and, and joyous. Um, he uh, did make mention many times about how much. That he had put in the work. Mm-hmm. Oh God! You know yeah. he yeah. he was a he was a business owner mm-hmm. and a small business owner. I mean, he's in the farming business, right? And so he would have to do his main business around the brew pub. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he was working, uh, you know, seven days a week. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. d- d- going through all of these jobs, and I'm not going to say how many hours a day he slept, but. I can't imagine it was very money. Yeah, and then his yeah. wife also was very invested in the business in the sense of working at the business. Correct. Yet uh, another tie to those women that are so essential to, yes. to brewing. Yes. Although I will say to kind of take a couple steps back, how you had said that this wasn't, Yuli's name wasn't a name that you were super familiar with. A lot of what we've gotten from 
uh, from Bruce Guy's Happy Hour in previous episodes, and they even mentioned this. So these are not, this is not my own observation, just kind of a recap of theirs. It's been West Coast focused. Like this is the first kind of East Coast. Right. Brewery. I know the Smithsonian's in D.C., so that's that's East Coast. But this is the first brewery or craft brewery right. that's been so, East Coast based. So, I do think that it was really cool. And I apologize, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, no. If I don't want to bury the lead, mm-hmm. but Asheville as a beer hub, mm-hmm. as a mecca, wouldn't exist if somebody wouldn't have done this first. Correct. Which is change the law had a brewery and and opened this opportunity up. And Uli is very, very um, b- b- passive in trying to accept the the crown of you are the reason why this happened. He he is very uh, bashful in a way. Uh, sure. He doesn't he doesn't really care to have that sort of recognition or moniker. Would it have happened without him? Yes. But the timing that it happened wouldn't have happened without Without him. him. Absolutely. And so it does come up several times that Asheville as this beer mecca, you connect the dots or you draw the lineage all the way back. It Mm -hmm. goes back to Uli. Right. 100%. 100%. Uli and and the Weeping Radish. One of the really neat things about there are so many neat things every single episode of bruce guy's happy hour is full of neat this is one of the neat things about this episode and this is a neat thing and there are just so many amazing nuggets in in these episodes one of them that i really liked is how he talked about when he was trying to change the law and trying to get the brew pub started up he had a local business that helped to fund the brew pub oh this is good and it is a a very seasonal company or store locally. Who knew Spirit Halloween would have that much of an impact it's in huge. craft beer? It was huge. Huge. Spirit Halloween pretty much said, yeah, hey, you know, we only pop up randomly when there's kind of an empty, you know, lot nearby. But we think what you're doing is awesome. We want to fund your first brewery here. And then his second brewery, his second Weeping Radish location, which is in Durham, North Carolina, was funded by a, a German group that was traveling to the United States. Like, they weren't even, like, part of the the American system. I don't know how I want to word that. It's it, ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it, it's also... Amazing, and it, and it, at at first glance, I didn't know. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna love this. I, I don't know who this. I don't recognize who mm-hmm. this person is. But oh, it, ye of little faith with it, uh, Bruce Guy's happy. Yeah. Totally, <laughs> totally within, you know, the, after the opening banter, mm-hmm. and you talk to Uli, or or they start talking to Uli, and it's like, okay, you're immediately guy, like, I love this guy. Oh, uh, I love just, this guy. Just, yeah. uh, you know, got to hang out and have beers with Uli. You're absolutely right that this just is, is engaging from, you know, start to finish. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just very interesting. They also go into the fact that so many large breweries, I mean, think about this. From a logistical standpoint, you've got large breweries on the West Coast that want to distribute to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And what makes it, what would make it more efficient is having breweries on the East Coast. And so he had to struggle and work with, you know, politicians. And he's very clear and and open about how he would work with uh, uh, politicians. Sure. Sure. But now the, 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 um, the local governments and entities are let's say, quote-unquote, throwing money at these large, large breweries Mm -hmm. and helping them come to the East Coast. And Brett is over there um, chewing glass, (laughs) you know, uh, uh, thinking about how this this whole system is working, Mm -hmm. about, you know, small business being the backbone of America, and yet... A bigger beer, even though you know, they're still small businesses. Right, right. But 
bigger small business breweries are being thrown so much money in in, in the way of uh, uh, concessions uh, to come and open, you know, their you know just meccas right, on the right, east right. coast. And so uh, there's so many just interesting. Uh, topics and subtopics and, you know, uh, also microaggressions uh, that go through <laughs> this whole thing. It's very, very interesting. And uh, uh, talking about wanting to have beers, one of these days we need to have beers with Brett and Brett Mike. Mike. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, Brett and Mike, we know you're huge fans of the podcast. You listen all the time. Of course you do. Hit us up. You know where we are every Tuesday. Yeah. I might even be able to convince Marco to get over to the west side to go to either the higher gravity north side location, which you guys say you're a fan of, or Urban Artifact, or you carve somewhere. Out, you two carve out a day that works with uh, my schedule. Uh, <laughs> and like a, hey, how about a Tuesday? We'll meet at north side. Yeah. We'll record a pod, have some drinks. It'll be fun. Yeah. Let me know. And you guys can either be on our show or we can record our thing. And then after that, we just hang out and have drinks and, and get drunk and have an absolute ridiculous amount of fun. It'll be, a, it'll be a blast. And, Brett, if you can wear the Sasquatch costume, that would be amazing. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. It, you just know, saying. It's, it's a thing. Julia, <laughs> Julia has a thing about it. Hair. Oh hairy, my god! No! Oh entities. my god! Oh my god! Which is hilarious because hair is like one of my like. It makes me uncomfortable, and I don't have any good reason for. Well, that's why we get anyway, along so well. It's true because. <laughs> anyway, I will leave that one alone. Another cool thing that wasn't necessarily beer related that they talked about, which was a phenomenal talking point, and they could have had an entire episode on this, but again, not beer related. They were talking about education and the goals of education and how they differ between Germany and the United States. And Uli had such a spot-on analogy or, or take on it. Yeah, I remember that. In the United States, as far as education goes, the United States says, let's just try to shove as many people through college as possible. Like, we see college as, like, the mecca, the the epitome of education. If you can get a four-year degree, my God, you're, the world is open to you, and everything's <laughs> amazing, and, and all that stuff. Where the, the German take on education or higher education is, let's just ensure that every child has the ability to go into a profession when their education is finished, whether that's anything from like a trade school to sure. like their university, but whenever they determine that they feel their education level can't go any farther, they're ready for a profession. They're ready to enter the sure. workforce. Whereas here in the United States, sure, you could have a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD in absolutely anything, and it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get any sort of job anywhere, whereas right. when you focus on a profession, you've already proven that you can do whatever that profession requires. I couldn't agree more with uh, his base point. Uh, Yuli's I agree. Base yeah, point. yeah. Funneling uh, young adults through a four-year education to come out with a four-year education has uh, what value? Uh, and it has is, merit, right? It right. Does. I'm not it discrediting it at all. It right, does have right, merit, right. Uh, but when you, uh, you know, unless you're going to have a, a specialty, you know, there's so much vastness in mm. in employment, right? Sure. So, sure. and that's why I totally support uh, my youngest. The shout out to my youngest Ari, who is going to finish high school and is working. Uh, and, and, and learning through a trade school. Hell yeah. Um, Hell which yeah. is awesome. But yeah, they, absolutely. they ultimately are, are probably going to go to higher education, but uh, piggyback off that and then go into uh, you know, the field of, of their choice. Mm -hmm. But I think this society is so... We need people 
who know how to do trades. We how to need, do things. How to right. do things. We need people that know how to do things. And Having a degree in something is amazing, and I am not trying to discredit yes, that in any way, shape, is. or form. It is, but and there, that is you, certainly like to trades, be respected. Yeah, if, you, but, if, if you're someone that can do something, plumbing, HVAC, electrical work. I mean, I'm just picking kind of like the the, co- you know, the, the air quotes, the, the real stuff. common, you know, all that. Yes, of course. My God, uh, your opportunities are limitless. Uh, and we just feel like for whatever reason as a society, oh, trades aren't no, as good super, as super, a, super a four-year important. degree in, in, you know, the cultural arts, which nothing wrong with it, but what the hell do you do with that? Yeah. There, you know? There, you know, certainly it, it all of those things that parents for forever have wanted you to get into, uh, you need to be an accountant, you need to be a lawyer, you need to be a doctor, you need to be all these things, you need to be a pharmacist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. If you if you are destined for that, if, you, if you're if you pursuing that, fantastic. But yeah. you're absolutely right. We still need people who uh, can work on our HVAC. We still need people who can help us, you know, uh, uh, shore up our deck or, or, or yeah. remove our deck and... and, and put up a new one and get the work, right permits. Work on HVAC for residential or commercial. Yeah. That's need, not going well, away. We need all, there's so many things. I mean, people who can expertly put in draft systems. And, Absolutely. You know, it, there's just, there's just on and on and on and on and on about trade I feel like, things. I feel like trade is more important than any. And, and the thing and, is, and I'm trying to differentiate and hopefully like listeners will understand what I mean by this. A tr- I feel like any more, a trade is so much more valuable and important than any degree system well, or like a degree program. Well, uh, yes and no. Who, it's, it's that's that's a huge blanket who's statement. Who's going to change your brakes? Who's going to change your oil? Right. Who's going to who's going to you know replace the uh, radiator in your car? I right. Mean, right. Where are the where are the the technicians that know how to master uh, body work on a vehicle? Absolutely. I mean, it, there's so it's, important. It's limitless. But you have to put in the work, mm-hmm. and, and the people who are willing to put in the work, the the you know people who uh, dig into the trades and are able to to get in the trades, brewing as a trade, yes, uh, distilling as a trade, absolutely. all of these things, absolutely, all of these things are are super important and and can not only help us have a better life. But so many of them are avenues for them mm-hmm. to be like we were talking about Uli, a small a, a, a small business owner. You a have, small business owner that makes a huge impact whether they realize it or not. As simple you, as as simple as somebody who knows how to groom dogs. Exactly. You could have a mobile dog grooming business. Mm-hmm. You could have a uh, a brick and mortar dog grooming business. You could right, you, right. you know the 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 possibilities are out there for you to 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 provide not just a living for yourself and your passion mm-hmm. or the thing that you do and do well, mm-hmm. but you can have uh, a, a fantastic uh, life and be able to uh, achieve wonderful things through your yard cutting business. Through, Absolutely. Through the the. Like you and I talk, neither of us want to cut our yards. So we are willing to pay people to do that for us. I mean, right there, that's a trade. I mean, that, that lawn yeah. care, landscaping, as simple as that is. I mean, people people want to pay other people to do these things. Yeah. And if you have a bachelor's degree in, in English literature, sure, you can still cut a lawn. But it's completely different than if if people know that that is your trade, that that is what you focus on to know how high the blade needs to be so that the grass still grows and gets the right nutrients and all that. And And, and I think you're right. Uli put a, without even saying it, with just his brief little, this is how the U.S. sees education versus how like kind of the German view of education is. It hit the nail on the head. I mean, there is just... It's all about teaching people how to fish, right? Correct. And, and the thing is, Correct. it's just, you know, what what are you fishing for? And as long as you can fish, mm-hmm. then you can you can make an income, you know. And, Agreed. And, uh, Agreed. So I and I also want to say that I I, I truly appreciate uh, Mike Rowe mm-hmm. oh, uh, yeah. for yeah. his perspective on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Mike Rowe, um, host trade. of yeah. uh, Dirty, Dirty Jobs, jobs and, and all the other things that he does, mm-hmm. certainly 
not just uh, promotes uh, trade education, but he provides uh, scholarships mm -hmm. through his uh, program, uh, the Micro Works program. Yep, yep. And so I, I hope that everybody who doesn't feel that they're meant to go to uh, college or have a four-year degree or, or move on from that understands that there's a place for you somewhere where you can learn something oh, yeah. where you yeah, can yeah, yeah. where you can uh, be not just a productive member of society but also provide a one of the most essential parts of society um, people most forget essential. how and, and essential tradesmen tradesmen women people are yeah and and provide an opportunity for you to create something that maybe could be passed down as a business to your family. True that. So, um, so let's tie this back into Bruce Guy's happy hour. Yeah. Uli came from, so this, it sort of ties in. I'm, I'm trying to kind of connect some of the dots here. But one of the kind of last points that I had on this episode is that Uli came from a culture of craft. It was about community. It was about that small batch, those, those small... What people look at as small jobs, kind of like the trades, they look at, you know, a lot of people here in the U.S. look at trade labor, trade, you know, skilled people as non-essential when, my God, that's the basis of what the community is built upon. Uli coming from a culture of craft, which is essentially community, not only ties back to that in part, I feel like, but also ties into what... The gnome talked about in in his last episode of Cincy Brewcast, not the higher gravity one, but the one that that Josh and I got to be a part of, and the one that What You Into Tank Man uh, Anthony Tank Mansfield's podcast, where he had the gnome and Matt Damaris and Luke G on. What is craft? What exactly is that? It's community. It is such a community focus, and again, it's it's a huge topic. It's a broad topic. Uli just barely brushed the surface of that with this episode. I mean, you can't deny that without that community focus. What Uli wanted to do with the Weeping Radish would never have happened. They would have never had that local uh, tourist-related business that I'm saying is Spirit Halloween. You have to listen to find out what it actually Right. May or may not be. Mm. As well as like. Do you mean it might not have been Spirit Halloween? I mean, we, it is our version of the truth of these podcasts. Okay. That is, that is what we're all about. This episode was phenomenal, as is all of the Bruce Guys episodes. I think you can probably tell when we start talking about this, our energy levels go up. Yeah. Brett and Mike put together such an absolutely amazing show with such amazing guests that even when it's a name, that we're not familiar with, we can't help but be ridiculously excited from a minute or two in, like, holy crap, this is going to be great. This guest is absolutely amazing, and I am super excited. I don't know how many episodes they're going to have in this season of Bruce Guy's Happy Hour, but I I don't want it to end. What What am I going to say? It, it was, it was, it was uh, awesome. It was awesome. It was fantastic. It was when this season came out, it was new, mm -hmm. and I was excited. Mm -hmm. Also excited to hear Higher Gravity as a sponsor. That's oh, yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, and br hearing Brett and Mike and everyone that they're getting to talk to is just fantastic. And I could not be happier and also uh, very proud as a person in the collective beer community and just a Cincinnatian that their podcast is getting, you know, the 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 level of guests that they're yeah, getting, absolutely, and and they certainly deserve and have earned uh, those guests. Mm. Uh, oh, for especially, sure. You for know, sure. For um, just, I'm I'm just I'm beaming about it. I, I am I, too. I, I, yeah. I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's, so it's you just if you're not listening, you feel I don't know what the proud f you're doing. That that they're if you're listening to us and you're not listening to them, there is something wrong. I don't with really you. know what you're doing. No, no, you need to listen to Bruce Guy's Happy Hour. I am like you, so beyond proud that not only is it a Cincinnati podcast, it's a Cincinnati beer podcast. 
and it is a Cincinnati beer podcast that is touching on absolutely amazing guests and topics about the history of craft beer in America and how we got to the point to where we are today. I mean, without without the people that they're talking to, you and I might not be doing our show. We have one podcast left. We do. Do you have enough beer to get through that? I mean, I still have. No. I still have plenty of mine. No. So let's take a quick break. That's a no. And you I'm get also, a refill. I real quick break while Marco gets another beer, and then we are going to come back with not our favorite podcast to recap, but the most fun podcast to recap: Shift Beer. So stick around for just a few seconds, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Marco. Julia. You have a new beer in your glass. Well, I have the same beer in my glass because this is a heavy hitter for me. So I, this is it. This is all that I'm drinking for the rest of the night. I yeah. am this glass. A dark ambrosia. All right. Shift beers, episode 89. Spaghetti and forget it, a.k.a. oops. Oops, all bonus beers, a.k.a. simply spaghetti, a.k.a. spaghetti. Yeah. There were a lot of titles. Yeah. For this episode that they were talking about in the course of the episode, which was freaking amazing. Our all-time favorite Shift Beers guest was on this episode. Lee! Lee! Oh, hold on. I got a button for this one. Shit. Lee showed up and he brought some absolute bangers for the Shift Beers crew to drink. Yeah. And they spaghetti it up. Go ahead and tell everybody that's listening what the fuck spaghetti <laughs> means. So to spaghetti a beer, which I'm not entirely sure why it's called spaghetti. I don't know if it's just because it's an Italian thing, but to spaghetti a beverage is basically having a high life with a shot of Campari added, which Campari is an English bitter, typically orange peel, but they spaghetti all of the things. Yeah, it wasn't just, just high life. They just spaghetti. It was everything. They went around and, and shot their spaghetti ridiculous. everywhere. It was it was freaking amazing. Is that so is this uh I'm sure you did your research uh sure. in the history of things and um and spaghetti uh but is that typically a, a thing where you just uh spaghetti shit? Typically it's just high life. So a spaghetti? Yeah. If you're talking about a spaghetti in the drinking, the drinking sphere, as I'm, we I, are. I don't know. As, as we, we are. are, typically it is a shot of Campari in a Miller High Life. You take a drink out of the Miller High Life to get a little bit of extra room in in the can, the glass, whatever. Put in a shot of Campari, and that is a spaghetti. Okay. I'm sure that it is much more expansive than that globally, know. as Shift Beers did, but. The they went through uh, again, the air a quote, 750 mil uh, bottle Campari of Campari in a what hour and twenty minute episode? Hour and twenty minute episode. I mean, amongst everything that they drank, ridiculous. It's, uh, it's so you know it's going to be a good show. So just from the beginning, when they were talking about j- drinking, which was a very small portion of the episode, so good fucking job, guys, on that. Brian and Chris and their crew for their 4th of July party, they saved a dog's life. They did. They did. This is not a joke. This is not us making shit up. Yeah. It was 100% they saved a they dog's saved life. They saved a dog's life. Yeah, yes. true. Yes, true. absolutely. They also had a slip and slide party. Julia, how was it? It was amazing, but I learned a big, big, big lesson. You do not use the slip and slide after Chris. Ah. Uh, you just don't do it. Yes. Once Because it goes washes down, his crack off mm-hmm, when he slides down, mm-hmm. and he has a very crusty crack. Yeah, so not only do you get the crusties left on the slip and slide, but Chris's crack is now cultivating a rainforest. Yeah. Pretty much you have to ban him from sl- from slip and sliding. What if, what if you uh, buy like a bidet attachment and put it in your restroom and tell Chris that he needs a bidet no. before he No, because then we get back to the trade discussion and you need a plumber. So what you need to have him do oh, is shit. just use like the the super heavy like spray attachment on your garden hose. Yeah, garden hose. Yeah. 
Heart, hose it out. Yeah. The drinking was only 20 minutes. Good 20 ish minutes. So they good did, they did good a good job there. Good job. Let's see what else was there. Lee might know more about brewing than Brian does. That's because he's a. Nuclear physicist? Nu- well, nuclear engineer. Nuclear engineer, I believe, is the actual title that Lee Or owns. I could, I could do it like uh, George uh, Nuclear. 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 Well, but Lee is taking cla- like brewing classes. He is, yeah. So good on him for continuing that education. I mean, fucking phenomenal. He already. I told him. He told me when he signed up, and I told him, oh, "Look, man, you ever need help? You, you can uh, let me know." However, I was talking to a person who's way smarter than I am, anyway. <laughs> it is true. Lee is always the smartest person in any room. Well, I mean, uh, the education, his education. Like his degree in Dude, education. Dude, he created Center Twix. You yeah. cannot beat that, no but, matter what. I mean, I didn't go to I didn't go to college. Other than that one time either. when well, I picked no, up my I went sister, for a year. I, I picked up my sister for like winter break. You and showed I up home. at college. You didn't. I go showed to college. up. Yeah, I went to <laughs> I went to college. Showed up at college, uh, but uh, but his degree is um, one that uh, connotes uh, intelligence. It's true. It is very true. But as much as we say this, Lee is the most approachable, smart guy that I have ever met. So oh. if you ever see Lee anywhere and you happen to know who he is, my God, just say hi to him. He is such a such a he's uh, awesome. We love a, Lee. A wonderful, so wonderful person. A very, uh, you know, a kind, kind person. I'm uh, really hoping that he and Danielle can make it to the live show on the 26th. So. Yes. I mean, if they can, it's cool. But, man, that would be super awesome if that can happen. Uh, To get back to shift beers, once again, Brian's demons were awoken. And there were noises that I don't even, I I don't understand. Yeah, even Chris suggested that he probably see see somebody about that. Which we've said multiple times. We have. We've said uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else was there? They were talking about Bucky's, the Bucky's gas station chain. Yeah, have you been to a Bucky's? I have not. I have but not they either. Just opened one up that is, and I use air quotes, close to us, closer than any of the other ones. There is the closest Bucky's gas station slash trucker haven because it it sounds amazing. Is in Richmond, Kentucky, which is just south of Lexington. Okay. So two and a half, three ish hours, depending on where you're coming from, and you can be part of the Bucky's family. You know, the, I, it certainly sounds, I, I have family in Texas, and they all the time on Facebook post, you know, uh, memes or funny things about Bucky's. I wouldn't mind stopping into one. Apparently, like, the sausage roller machines are, like, they, like, they have employees that take the little hot dogs off of the rollers for you and put them on freshly toasted buns for you and then hand them to you in nice little packaging instead of you doing it yourself. Okay. It sounds amazing. It does. It sounds it does. amazing. It does. What else sounds ama- sounded amazing about this episode are all of the stories that Lee got to tell, such as... Oh, wonderful. Okay, so... So I'm not uh, going into any of these because you need to listen Well, to put this it on episode. the poll, Julia. Okay, I'll do it. Put it on the poll... Did. Is it almost a two beers and a truth? Or two lies and a truth? Two beers and a truth. No, this is... Same this is, thing. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you uh, three options. Okay. Did Lee dress with a trash can and a green shirt and have a liter of gin okay. and Snapple... And call it a Oscar the Grouch costume. Okay. Option one. Okay. Did Lee dress in a Big Bird costume with a liter of gin and Snapple? Okay, sticking with the gin and Snapple. All right. Okay. All right. I, I, or I like did it. Did Lee, as an option three, three. Mm. did Lee dress as a Grover mm. with a liter of gin? And Snapple, a Snapple for I, Halloween um, one year. Those are those are all very, very good choices. Only one is true. One is true, 
We're not going to give you three falsehoods. No. One is very true. Uh, my God, that story was absolutely amazing. The story about how he accidentally iced his wife in a long con was uh, amazing. Yes. When when it comes to Lee, I feel like you can do no wrong having him as a guest because he's going to have fun with you guys. He's going to give you stories. He's going to bring beers or, in this case, like spiked lemonade. I don't want to call them seltzers or... Yeah. Ready to drink cocktails, yeah. but uh, yeah. he he is going to provide an insane amount of entertainment and quality entertainment, yes. not just fluff kind of of stuff. Oh, for sure. He also maxes out our uh, headphones, yeah, our headsets. Yeah, that too. Uh, what else was there about this episode? They assaulted astronaut food. Brett Coleman Baker is going to be pissed. When he listens to this episode of Shift Beers, because once he, once he listens to it, I bet he's in a Sasquatch costume ready to he? attack everybody from Shift Beers so that he is not recognized okay. for what they okay. did to his astronaut food. So what you're, what you're saying is there's going to be a news story, entire podcast team annihilated by Sasquatch. Correct. Okay. And that could have been what happened right behind us. We had, the, <laughs> we had yeah. f- like three fire trucks. Yeah. We had uh, there was a thing police happening. Police cars and the coroner, mm-hmm. the coroner's car showed up right behind uh, us. Yeah, it was. It got awkward for a bit. I mean, and you Chris guys, was here. You guys Chris probably was here heard the siren. You got here. He was. Well, he was supposed to be at the place they don't work well, at. Well, does so anybody know if out. he's still alive? Because Ooh, good question. Sasquatch so could have got him. Okay, so the last time that he sent me a message, let me pull this up. Because I was supposed to meet up with him at the place they don't work at to drop off some beers for shift beers. Yeah. I I messaged Josh first. He was like, hey, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be at another location all day. But the other shift beers, miscreants, should be there. So let's see. At uh, 4.04 today, I said, hey, are any of you miscreants here? He did not respond until almost 6 o'clock. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I saw this last night but couldn't respond. I watched Weekly Pine and then I passed out. Whatever. Luckily, Josh was at the place that they don't work at. I was able to give them beers. But no, we have not seen him alive since you saw him here, okay. which I will say, I'm glad I ran into into Jangle from Shift Beers. I gave them some what I think are pretty fucking banger beers. Yeah. And he was like, if you're not a Patreon member for Shift Beers, you need to be because they said on their latest Patreon episode, Julia, we have some freedom beers for you from their last episode. I'm like, I was all excited. I'm like, I have this awesome beer to give you guys. I'm excited to get this freedom beer that is like the best. I walked out of that place with a grocery bag full of beer. But let me tell you what that beer was so freaking banger beer from parish brewing from an out-of-state brewery that i paid to have shipped here to cincinnati and they gave me a freedom beer which is a bud a budweiser supreme a budweiser zero so an na beer non-alcoholic beer a dogfish head lemon quest non-alcoholic seltzer a a black long drink, which is a higher ABV long drink, which I'm not mad about. A blue slushy cider, which Brian's part of a bunch of cider groups in the Facebooks, and apparently they're all freaking out about it. I got a can of that. So I gave them ridiculous, awesome beer and got a whole bunch of... Bud and Bud Zero. Bud and non-alcoholic beers in return. Well, you know what? Um... It's what they had. It is. It is. I kind of feel had. like... You kind of uh, surprised them, and they gave you what they had. And they're had. like, hey, we need to clean out the mini fridge anyway. Oh, uh, we got this that we haven't drank in months. It's fine. Yeah. I understand. Like, we didn't we didn't schedule this. It's not like they knew I was coming in to give them stuff, so they didn't have, you know, time to prepare. Yeah, I mean, you ever you ever knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, you know... Uh, happy Tuesday, and, and you have just, I don't know, a, a plate of cookies, and like, oh, that's awesome, and then they say, 
oh, here, take this. And it's like a, a socks. No. Like, I mean, never. you don't, I mean, I, you don't, you don't have necessarily a reciprocal thing <laughs> when somebody just shows up uh, with something unexpected. Right. Yeah. And no, no, no. And and I even said, to, in, in all in all seriousness, I even said to to Jangle, I'm like, I brought you these beers because I wanted you to enjoy them, not because I expected anything back from it. But I, it was funny enough that it's like, oh no, 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 here, here, let me give. You, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? And it's all just the remnants of, <laughs> of their beer fridge, at the place that they don't work at. It just it fits into the shift beers narrative for sure. so incredibly well, oh, and yeah. I love it. This episode, we need to wrap this up because we want to finish our beers, and BC's needs to close. This episode was hilarious, Very not fun. just because of Lee. Lee definitely brought it up to that next level. Brought it. But my God, this was such a fun episode. Watching them spaghetti all the things. Uh, over, spaghetti. Over spaghetting all yeah, the things. Oh, I mean, everything. It was, I, I, you over spaghetti. It, including Urban Artifact beers, which I don't know. I kind of want to try a spaghetti key punch now, even though I okay. think that that means Brett will never speak to us ever, ever, ever. Just ever. don't tell him. I won't. I won't tell him when I do it or if I do it, but absolutely do it all amazing. The time and don't tell him. Absolutely amazing. Listen to this episode, episode of Shift Beers. Support their Patreon. They don't do a ton of content regularly, but what they do put out there is fucking hilarious. As anyone knows who And the shows last one was to, all about us. Yeah. It really was. And Marco knows that because I share my account with him. So <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as I told Chef Beers, um, so does anyone that shows up at uh, at Bogarts the Wednesday after they drop a Patreon episode. So um, take that. There you go. We love Boom. you guys. We love you guys. The the amount of publicity I give to you guys should cover me sharing my account with Marco. But to wrap up this recap, because again, this place is going to close and we need to get the hell out of here. T Marco, tell the people about the best part of our Shift Beers recap. I will. So there's one podcast where there's a drinking game involved and it is Shift Beers. And so what we do is we count all the audible burps and then we add those up and uh, we get a total number and then uh, based off an average of two ounces per drink, when you drink, uh, we let you know how many ounces and then dumb that down to pints and let you know how many pints you would have needed to consume if you're doing the drinking game with shift beers. There it is. That's what it is. Don't at me about the number of ounces. <laughs> I Googled it, and that's what they said. So uh, that's what we're going with. So Newport Report, even though your ounces may be, well, it's not even ounces, your milliliters may be more than what our average ounces are. It's a Google thing. You guys drink as much as you feel fit per Yeah, sip. whatever. It's all so, fine. Episode 89 of Shift Beers, Spaghetti it and Forget It, a.k.a. Simply Spaghetti, a.k.a. Oops All Bonus Beers, a.k.a. Anything That Rhymes With Spaghetti. Just, that's their title. This episode with Lee, they fucking brought it. Oh, yeah. We had a total of 98 audible burps. Ooh. It was almost like it was a seltzer episode, wow. but it wasn't. 98 audible burps, which translates into 196 ounces if you're doing a two-ounce sip, which translates into, you will die if you do this drinking game, please don't, unless it's not alcoholic stuff, 12.25 pints of your favorite beverage. Hell yeah, that's Holy awesome. Holy crap. Holy hell. That's amazing. Absolutely that's awesome. amazing. Well done. Well Good done job. to everybody. I mean, whenever Lee's there... The, they were waiting for you to show nah, up. I know, I know. They, they, they mentioned cool. it. It's but cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you were there, that would have easily been in the 120, 130 level. I know, I know. But that is still a hell of a number for, for a non-seltzer episode. Yeah, for the, sure. The Simply Lemonades all weren't super carbonated. So, my God, great job, guys. Yeah. You rocked. And that is our recap of Ship Beers, which means that is our that's our episode. Yeah. We've covered all that's the it. podcasts. So we done did it. We done did it. So a little bit of house cleaning so that BCs can close up and kick our asses out of here. 
Thank you so much for listening. As always, we really appreciate it. Please show up, if you're able to, to our live show next week, July 26th at 6 p.m. at BC's Bottle Lodge, Montgomery. We're going to try to keep it between an hour, hour and a half. Hopefully, as many of the podcasts that we recap are able to be here as possible. But it's going to be broadcast over the speakers anyway, so people's ears are going to be assaulted whether they want to or not. In addition to that, if you like what we do, share us with a friend. Like, review, subscribe, share, scream from the rooftops, do all of that good stuff. We really, really appreciate it. Follow us on social media. We are at Truth Beer Pod everywhere. You can email us anything you want to email us truthbeerpod at gmail.com if you have any complaints at raging hop on twitter we will compile those and let you know when we have enough to to do such things and if you would love to buy us a pint of beer or contribute monetarily so we can figure out upgrades video the kind of things that we want to do to make this even bigger and better for you guys truthbeerpod.com the big blue support us icon we love you. We thank you so much for this is episode 51. We are almost at a full year and we could not be more thrilled. Marco, what else do you have for the people? I just want everyone to know we truly appreciate your listenership and thank you. Uh, stick with us uh, and tell your friends and uh, let's do it. Uh, Julia, what are you doing next week? You going to be here with me on the Hell. live show? Hell yeah. I'm going to be listening to some Cincinnati Crap Your Podcasts. Hell yeah. Let's Talked do it. Talked about it with you live with our podcast See friends. you then. Listen, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. See ya. Hey everyone, uh, this is Marco with True Beer and Podsequences. I'm here with Julia, and I want to talk to everyone uh, who's in our uh, reach, our listening voice, and let you know that uh, you are important and that uh, tomorrow is the opportunity for great things. And so if you're uh, struggling, if you have a rough day, if you are struggling with uh, mental illness, mental issues, uh, there are people, if not in your life or your circle, there are people out there to help you get through that. Whether it doesn't matter the industry you're in, uh, food service, uh, retail, anything, uh, whatever it is, all of us have ups and downs. And it's important that all of you know that uh, life is worth living and tomorrow brings opportunity. And so with that being said, Julia has some information that she'd like to share. Yeah, if you're so if you're struggling in any way mentally, if you're just having a really bad day, if you've been struggling with negative thoughts or feeling that you need help in some form and you don't feel comfortable talking to a friend, a family, a coworker, uh, someone from from any organization that you're part of. There are people out there that you can talk to, and that is the Suicide and Crisis Support Lifelines. They have a new number that just became live nationwide on July the 16th. If you are having any mental health issues or struggles and you just need to talk to someone, you can call or text 988 which is just the same as 911, but it is purely for mental health support, 988 for any support, or you can do a chat at 988lifeline.org. You don't have to be suicidal to call or text or reach out via chat. If you have any struggle, substance abuse, uh, economic worries or problems, relationship trouble, uh, issues with your sexual identity, illnesses, getting over abuse, depression, being lonely, anything at all that you need to talk to someone that you feel that you don't have a someone directly involved in your life that you can talk to, reach out to 988 or 988lifeline.org. There is a counselor available to just talk to you and just let you know that, that you matter and that tomorrow will be a better day. Go ahead and reach out to them because we want you to be around to listen to us next week and beyond because you matter and we love you and we want you to be a part of this amazing world no matter how bad today may seem we love you